The coroner has said the death of a two-year-old boy who suffered a prolonged exposure to mould should be a defining moment for the housing sector. Awab Ishak died two years ago from a respiratory condition caused by the mould in the Housing Association flat where he lived with his parents in Rochdale. His father had repeatedly complained about it. Well, the family's solicitor has been speaking on their behalf. Awab's coughing fits would sometimes last two to three days. There were days we wouldn't be able to take him out of the house because of how bad his coughing was. But of course, by him staying in the house, this made his coughing worse. We were absolutely trapped. Living in these conditions affected every aspect of our lives. We didn't feel at peace with ourselves when in the property. Well, we're joined now by Quay J. Twinibo, who knows all too well what it's like to live in appalling conditions in social housing. You've done so much campaigning on this. Um, Quay J., thanks so much for joining us. Just first of all, your reaction to what's happened today. I mean, it's ap absolutely horrific. I think this case is a damning indictment of everything that's wrong with housing, especially social housing in this country, in the United Kingdom. And um, Awab's unfortunately had to pay the ultimate price. Um, it's been going on for far too long. I mean, we talk about lessons learned. Lessons really should have been learned after Grenfell. Yet more than five years on, here we are today, talking about a young boy who's died as a result of ne neglect by the family's housing provider. And the mould we saw where he lived, I mean, awful pictures. But, I mean, in your campaign, you've seen places even worse than that, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, the worst examples you can think of, I've probably seen. Mm. Um, tenants become ill, tenants... Um, this is some of your stuff here you've filmed, isn't it? Yes. I mean, you can see there just how bad this case of damper mould is and I've been contacted by in the last 18 months over 300 different families living in homes filled with damp and mold and the reason they contact me is because they're ignored um, when they reach out to their housing providers and other individuals mm. who should be prioritizing their health and safety especially when it comes to their homes but unfortunately they're not Gosh, look at that. So, I mean, this is obviously, this was, what was that, like a lounge or something? It is. That was the front room and every single wall in there was covered in severe black damp and mould. There was some, uh, there was um, multiple different types of mould in that living room, some of which I've never seen in my life before, but it was absolutely horrific. What do you think will happen after these conclusions today by the coroner? Because it, you know, do you think we're going to see other cases, you know, where coroners come to the same conclusions? Sadly, I think we are. Um, I mean, this is, I think, one of many, like I said, I've spoken to thousands of tenants in similar situations across the country, young people, people dying of terminal illnesses such as lung cancer, living in homes filled with damp and mould. And unfortunately, I don't think it's the last we are going to see unless criminal charges are brought, because this is clearly manslaughter in this case, and we need criminal charges to ensure this doesn't continue to happen. And I don't think until that does happen, we won't stop seeing cases like this. Just quite, Jay, quickly, we've obviously been uh, asking for people on the five phone for comment on this this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, Debbie from Liverpool, uh, it's a poor show that these people in social housing are paying rent for a bad service. Mm -hmm. uh, Shell from Chelmsford said, uh, told my landlord the flat had mould, they replastered and painted and then my rent went up. She says she's too scared to say anything else. I mean, do you see that sort of thing? People complain and then oh, things absolutely. get even worse. I mean, when it comes to damp and mould, housing providers have this tendency to blame tenants for it, telling them stop drying your clothes indoors, open windows, etc. when in fact it's due to structural issues with the building. The saddest part about this story is even after Awab had passed away, his parents were still probably having to pay rent on a monthly basis to ensure they weren't evicted by their housing provider, even though he died as a direct result of their negligence. Kweja, you do an amazing job and uh, we will talk to you soon when you've brought some of these uh, other cases uh, to you. our attention. Thank you so much, Kweja. Thanks. Thanks for having me.